Hey photographers, Rich Sealing here, and today I want to talk to you about highlights. Are you overexposing your highlights? It's a really important question. It's one of the most common mistakes I see made on my workshops and with my printing clients, and it's a critical area of your photographs. When I worked at the Ansel Adams Gallery, I had the chance every day to look at prints from some of the acknowledged masters of the craft, people like Ansel Adams, of course, and John Sexton, Charlie Kramer, uh, Alan Ross, a whole host of other photographers who had just really perfected the craft. And one of the things that I spent the most time looking at was highlights, because highlights just carry a photograph. If you have a picture of snow or water, and it's just all blown out and pure white, you don't have any of that essence of what you're photographing. You don't have the feeling of snow or the feeling of running water. Highlights communicate so much about a photograph, so I spent a lot of time looking at highlights and learning how to have that same beauty in my own photographs. So if you really want to improve your photographs, one of the best things you can do is learn how to expose so that you're not overexposing. And the first part of that is you got to check your photographs and see, am I overexposing? But to do that, we need the right tools. Our camera with our histogram and our highlight warnings really isn't that great a tool. And when we get into processing software like Photoshop or Lightroom, it really doesn't tell us if we've overexposed highlights. It'll just tell us if they're white. What we really need to know is, did our exposure hold detail in highlights? And that's the definition of proper exposure for highlights. We want to hold detail. Overexposure means there's so much exposure that no detail was held. And the best tool that I know for judging this is a tool called Raw Digger. It's a little software application you can download. It's free for 30 days and then about $19 to have it. I'm going to show you how I use Raw Digger to evaluate highlights and so that you can use the same tool to evaluate your photographs and pick which ones have good highlight detail and which don't and use that feedback to improve your technique in the field as well as pick the right one for processing. So let's take a look at Raw Digger here. So Raw Digger has three main areas and I've got a, a file up here and don't completely trust this view. It's what Raw Digger is doing is it's showing us the full information of the raw file. It's everything that's in that raw file, which is something we actually don't see when we go into Photoshop or Lightroom or other programs. It's already baking in some processing and it's not what we see on the back of our camera, but Raw Digger lets us actually look at the real raw numbers that were captured by our camera. And of course, we're interested in highlight areas, and I think we've got a big area here on this waterfall of highlight details. And one of the most valuable parts of Raw Digger is this overexposure, underexposure stats. And what this does is it tells us how many pixels in our photograph are overexposed or underexposed. And since we're talking about highlights, we're gonna talk about overexposed for this video. And you can see in this photograph, I have 5,000 red pixels overexposed. Green is broken up into two separate layers because of the way the Bayer matrix sensor works. We have 36,000 in one layer, 36,000 in the other, and then 30,000 blue pixels overexposed. So we've got oh, about 100,000 or so pixels overexposed here. So this is really valuable data. This numerically tells me what's going on, but I've got a way to look at this visually too that it's gonna look pretty familiar. I can turn on this display overexposure and it will show me where those overexposed pixels are. So I can get a visual idea. Is this just a bunch of random pixels all throughout the photograph or is it grouped all together in an area that needs critical detail like this waterfall? We also have another readout here that shows us the minimum value for pixels in the image and the maximum values. And you can see in my RGB and G2, I'm hitting the same number in all of that. And for the way this file is formatted, that 15,783 is basically a pure white pixel. That's an overexposed pixel. You know, the one thing we haven't looked at here is the histogram. And histograms are of limited use. Actually looking at numbers like you have here and here and a view is much more valuable than the histogram. But I just wanna show you here for our overexposed pixels at 36, 30, and 36, we can actually see that in a spike here at the end of our green channels and our blue channels. And that is the effective right of the histogram. That's the end of the scale. And when those have spiked up like that, what we're seeing is these max pixels, all the pixels that hit that max value, 
and they're overexposed. But what we don't see is a good readout of all the pixels between the overexposure and here, which is about a stop below it. So it doesn't really give us a good read on there, but it does show us this. I'm just showing you that as this is a kind of a way to confirm it. But what really tells us what's going on is this overexpose, underexpose stat. So I happen to have a bracket of exposures here that we're taking at different settings. And we're going to look at what happens when we go down in exposure. This is 1 60th of a second. And we're going to go here and we're going to look at one one stop darker. You can see already visually we've dropped off the number of overexposed pixels. And by exposing one stop less light, we've dropped ourselves down to 5,000 green pixels in each channel and 200 blue. We've significantly reduced that overexposure. We're still overexposed, but it's down a lot. And you can see here we've gotten rid of that spike in the histogram again. And we're actually showing a little bit of detail in this highest region of the image. This is still overexposed though. It, ideally, I want a picture with a little less exposure so that I hold full detail in this waterfall. You know, somebody falls here, the, the detail in this is really such an important part of the photograph. It's such an important part of the beauty of Yosemite Falls. I want that detail in there. And fortunately, as part of my bracket, I did make one about a half a stop darker. We went from 1 1 25th to 1 1 80th of a second. And now you can see my overexposure stats basically have disappeared. I've got 39 overexposed in green and 43 in green too. Those are negligible. I'm not worried about those. Uh, you can see in blue, I'm not overexposed. Blue and red are now down off that peak amount. So, and I've got just a couple pixels showing in there. So this is a proper exposure. Even though here on screen, the way Raw Digger shows it, it looks like this is blown out. The numbers are telling me it's not actually blown out. And this is the exposure that I want to use. And just because we've looked at it in the other ones, let's look at the histogram. You can see here we have no spike. That's a good telltale. But again, the numbers are really what matters, reading out what these numbers are, which if you look right here, this is the live readout of wherever my cursor is. And we can see the actual values. And you can see as I cruise along through here, very few pixels are hitting that 15,000 number. In fact, I can't even find one. I'd have to perfectly line up over that red dot. I almost got one there. It lets me look at those pixel values for that. That information is way more valuable than this graph because the graph may not represent it in a way that actually shows me anything meaningful. So this is a photograph that doesn't have blown out highlight detail. And when I process this, I'm going to be able to pull out all the wonderful motion and feel that's in that waterfall and express that. So because of Raw Digger, I can actually see which of my photographs is properly exposed and has the right detail. And I can pick the right one for processing, save myself a lot of time and a lot of frustration. You should be using Raw Digger to go through your photographs, pick your favorite ones that you've already processed and see how well you did. See if you overexposed them or if you properly exposed them. Because I made a bracket of exposures, it was really easy here in the studio to pick one that had the right exposure. But to get that right in the field requires a different technique. And the technique I use, I outline in my online workshop, Improved Exposed to the Right, that shows you how to get a perfect exposed to the right every time to hold this detail and not have these doubts. We still need to use Raw Digger to evaluate, but with the right technique in the field, we can hone in on the right exposure more quickly and work in a more effective manner. So I encourage you to check that out. In the meantime, download Raw Digger, check out some of your files, if you want to see more videos about how Raw Digger works, click that subscribe button because I'm going to keep talking about this. Check out my website, craftingphotographs.com, and download it. Take a look at your photographs. Dig in, see what you can learn. And I look forward to talking to you next time.